these one headline grabbing historic achievements one after the other. Uh, th th thank you, Rahul. At the outset, I have to thank you for having me over here. Uh, as you rightly mentioned, every Indian, you, me, every one of us feeling proud about it. And also, uh, it's been a wonderful journey in the last few years as far as ISRO is concerned, one stride after the other. I think it's also been, uh, let me start from there, it's been possible because of the new space reforms brought in. Uh, you see, we never had a dearth of acumen or potential or capabilities. If you recall those photographs of uh, the archive photographs of Sarabhai carrying some of his saman on the carriage of the bicycle. Uh, which means that we were devoid of resources, uh, not of human resource, but otherwise. Uh, and, 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 and possibly that kind of an enabling milieu which is expected from the level of the policy makers or from the level of the political dispensation was possibly not forthcoming. That happened only, started happening only after 2014 when Prime Minister Modi came in. And uh, just about four years back, the unbelievable happened because for 60, 70 years, the Department of Space has had been functioning in silos and they had reconciled to carry on like that when Prime Minister Modi allowed us to open up to the private sector, the wider participation, wider collaboration of which SpadeX mission is also one example because even though ISRO was conducting it, it had a number of other institutions also collaborating, uh, uh, whether in the private sector, in the public sector. And I think that's one of the illust beautiful illustrations of whole of science, whole of government, whole of nation. Now, having said that, uh, what makes uh, SpadeX different from other three countries, which are already there uh, as a part of this elite league who have this capability, is that this is a mission which is totally, totally indigenous from A to Z. That also gives us a tremendous amount of confidence and uh, self-esteem. B, that it's a very cost-effective mission like most of our other missions. Chandrayaan-3 costs just about 600 crore and this one less than 400 crore, which is absolutely nothing compared to the uh, corresponding missions by the other nations. And third and most importantly, that many of our missions which are lined up uh, in the months and years to come are going to have their own place uh, as, as space accompaniments uh, universally. Like for example, uh, our Bharat, Bharati Antarik station. We are looking forward to have our own space station uh, over there, uh, which was so far only one station, International Space Station. Then we look forward to have a human in space, the first ever human mission. Then we look forward to having a human, Indian human landing on the surface of uh, moon. So all these missions would require docking and undocking capability. In addition to this, uh, we also plan to get back the samples collected by Chandrayaan-3 back to Earth for further analysis, for that too you require this kind of a facility available. Uh, then maybe in the times to come when you think, when, you, when we realize that there is a satellite in place which is functioning well, which needs to carry on for a longer while, uh, how do you re-energize it? So this is a means of, you know, carrying payloads and uh, sort of refueling it. Similarly, this uh, mission SpadeX also make, becomes different from other similar missions by the other three nations is that we have another component called CROP which means uh, experimenting uh, with orbital plant research. Uh, some seedlings have already started coming up. So, so that if the astronaut is there for a longer while, uh, what are the kind of vegetations or cultivations that can happen in the space environment? Uh, maybe later on we are also going to study space biology when the astronauts stay there for a longer while. So we have an MOU even with the Department of Biotechnology. So I think this is a wide, wide ecosystem as you rightly mentioned which has made the difference, it's been a game changer. So it's not only financial pooling, it's also the knowledge pooling uh, which has happened and space has started emerging as a very important component of Indian economy. Now when we talk of uh, becoming economy fourth and then third and then reaching that pedestal, I think if we ask ourselves where that value addition is going to come from, space is going to be an important se sector because it was hitherto unexplored or underexplored, very much like the marine sector. Uh, it's the same government under Prime Minister Modi, which has also announced the deep sea mission. And uh, not only we have, uh, by, as far as the government is concerned, the funding has been liberal, but only today, of course, a very historic decision was taken to have another launching pad, a wider one set up in the same premises in uh, Sri Harikota, where we already have two 
but they were smaller one, this will be bigger one to carry uh, heavier rockets, larger size rockets with a, with, a, with a new state of art technology. And similarly, just about six months back, uh, Prime Minister himself laid the foundation stone of another uh, launching site in Tuti Korean district of Tamil Nadu. So this kind of focus and prioritization which has been given to the space sector and which has been given the liberty to what the media that day very fancy, very uh, fondly described as unlocking of the space sector. It has actually uh, proved to be a turning point. Well, congratulations to you and of course the ISRO and the Indian scientific community for achieving this remarkable feat. You really left me with no questions to ask because you have given us such a comprehensive overview of uh, the efforts that have gone in and to I'm ensure, sure, uh, Rahul, I'm sure you're, 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 I'm sure Rahul, you will appreciate uh, and I think that uh, that's something that, that will also be a huge, huge uh, reassurance for our viewers. Our space economy has started uh, making such a steep uh, uh, in rise that we are, our future projections reflect that we might be uh, r rising five times in the next eight, ten years. Uh, as oh, well, that is a very interesting is aspect which of is something this, because was, there is a commercial yeah, knock-on. That was something this. which is hardly expected of India. Yes. Something, can can something you elaborate on those numbers, uh, Dr. So that, Jitender Singh? Could you elaborate on those numbers? See, what, oh, oh, yes, you see, yeah, right now we are just about, we started at a very small economy. We started very late, hmm. as I said, uh, that enabling uh, uh, influence, or patronage it was not available from the political dispensation till Prime Minister Modi came. So we started late. But we had no dearth of human, which is best illustrated from the fact that ISRO was set up in the year 1969. And uh, as you know, that was the year when Americans landed the first human being on the surface of the moon, Neil Armstrong. We were sure. just starting off. But today we are, we are there before anybody else at the southern pole of moon, which means we had everything as far as the human resource is concerned. But we were... Uh, feeling constrained otherwise. Now that it's been opened up, there's a huge, huge private investment happening, right. FDI happening. Now as far as space economy is concerned, we start out very small. Even now we are just about 8 billion US dollar. Hmm. But we hope to go to about 44 billion in just about 7-8 years. So this is going to be a, uh, a very steep rise in the years to come. Our uh, launching pads are now being hired by the uh, other nations. Uh, for example, uh, there is also a fascinating figure. We have so far earned as much as about 292 million euros from the European satellites and about 172 million dollars from launching of the US satellites. So I think it's become a huge source of industry economy in the times to come and startups. We just had one digit startup till four years back when Prime Minister Modi opened it to the private sector. Today we have nearly 300. So I think it's becoming a huge, huge new avenue uh, for uh, livelihood and also for economy. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Jitender Singh, for giving us, as I said, that comprehensive thank you, overview. Thank you. thank you very much. Uh, this is a great, great day for uh, Indian space exploration and space innovation viewers. What a fundamentally important achievement made by ISRO catapults India, of course, into a completely different orbit now. And let me hand you back to Kritsveen Walia to continue with uh, some of the other big stories of the day. Thanks very much, viewers.